what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the 31 Days of Horror. I am your host, Mood616, and thank you once again for stopping in, guys. Yes, 31 Days of Horror Volume 7, Day 8, is coming at you live. And yes, we're going to take it back to 1967 with a German film starring Christopher Lee. And uh, it is called The Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. Now, I've said in the past that I've seen this movie before. And why we're reviewing this movie today, or why I'm reviewing the film today, is because I've never seen this cut. Um, I used to have a, I guess more or less a cut DVD. I think this is the first time this version of the film has ever been on, uh, ever been released from the original negative. So, I knew it as Castle of the Walking Dead. And that was like a terrible transfer and shit like that. Totally different kind of version of the film. And so, yes, that's why we're here today re-watching this. And plus, I didn't really remember the movie all that much. Um, like I said, this is um, Christopher Lee starred in a German film. It also has Lex Barker in it, who played Tarzan in like the 40s and 50s. I've seen a couple of those movies. I think he did Tarzan like four or five, six times or something like that. And it's also got uh, Karen Dorr in it, who played, she was one of the Bond girls in You Only Live Twice, um, the uh, Sean Connery Bond film that was starring Donald Pleasance, who played Blofeld in that film. That's a really great one. Um, that's where I recognized her right away from that, so... But uh, yeah, The Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. Quick little synopsis on this one. Basically, Christopher, Plee, Christopher Lee plays Count uh, Regula. And in the beginning of the film, he's being executed for the murder of 12, um, 12 virgins. Um, he was doing experiments and he murdered 12 women. Uh, he gets caught because one of them gets away, his 13th victim gets away, and he gets executed. They basically quarter him, which is, uh, they tie a rope to each limb, tie it to a horse, and yeah, they basically rip his limbs off. <laughs> so, the story jumps 35 years later, uh, where we introduce Alex Barker's character, I think he plays Roger. He's a, he's a lawyer. Uh, he gets kind of summoned by uh, Christopher Lee's uh, state, and he has no idea who Count Regula is, but he receives this letter to come to his castle. And so he shows up in the small town where he basically needs a ride. He needs to get there. So he gets the help of, you know, a guy that has a carriage, um, a priest, and a couple beautiful women. One of them played by, by Karen Dorr. And they make their way to the castle, which, uh, of course, there's, um, a, there's, there's a lot going on <laughs> before they get there. And, of course, everything's not exactly what it seems. So... That is the uh, synopsis, the premise of the film. Now, my thoughts on The Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. This is a fantastic film. It is super dark and gothic. Very, very atmospheric. It's beautiful. It's got beautiful color schemes. It's got a great sound design. It's got great acting. It's got really cool effects. This thing has everything going for it. Um, it's a pretty basic idea. We've seen these types of movies done in the past quite often, you know, where you have somebody that's kind of trying to create elixir to, you know, have eternal life and things like that. And, uh, you know, they, you know, summon coming back from the death and things like that. But this one is done really well, man. I think it's just, it's so fantastic. Like, the journey to the castle is so fantastic. Like, the cinematography, the sets that they use, the painted backgrounds, um, just the, the, the gothic atmosphere that's created and the color scheme, it's very much in the vein of Mario Bava films. This is 1967, Argento hadn't got to that point yet, so you can really say Mario Bava color schemes. It looks fantastic, so in that sense, of, it looks very much like an Italian film at that point. Oh, the four scenes are just fantastic. There's lots of really good carnage going on. I love the scenes where they're rolling through and the uh, the carriage driver's seeing, like, bodies in the trees and he's seeing, like, you know, bodies hanging from the trees. And there's a whole pile of just great sets and scenes and stuff like that are going on. Um, but it's, uh, it's just gothic all and through. It's loosely based on The Pit and the Pendulum. There's a scene directly... Uh, towards the end of the film that is taken right from the pit and the pendulum. Um, it's not a ripoff. It's kind of based on that as it is and stuff like that. So, uh, But I love Christopher Lee in this movie, man. He basically gets executed in the beginning of the film. We see him for a couple minutes in the beginning of the film, and then he doesn't return until maybe maybe halfway through the film or something like that. But he's fantastic. The the makeup on him, he, he pulls off the character so well. It's really well done. Um, and all the characters in the film are very, very likable uh, to a point. And, but they're, I, I wouldn't say they're more... 
even that they're likable, they're just very interesting characters. Um, there's some twists and turns with some of the characters and stuff, but once they get to the castle, that's when things are just kind of go batshit. Um, the castle itself is very, very beautiful. I'm assuming that they shot in a real castle because a lot of the, the scenes seem like they were shot in castles. I couldn't really find any information on it and stuff, but it looks fantastic. A lot of cool stuff going on, a lot of... Um, uh, really cool trap doors and, you know, just a mad scientist stuff going on. Everything just looks really fantastic. A lot of carnage. That's one thing about this movie that's really crazy is that there's a lot of carnage in the film. A lot of kind of, um, you know, death and, and gothic scenes and stuff like that. But you don't see a lot of on scene, like on um, screen deaths and stuff like that. But it's just, it's prevalent throughout the whole film. It's really cool. It's really cool to see it in a 1967 film that has just so much carnage. It's pretty neat. Um, but Christopher Lee really does steal the show. When he comes back into the film, and the only thing that's, it's kind of interesting that they did in this is that, you know, Christopher Lee, who played Dracula before, like, what could kill Dracula crosses and stuff like that. So there, there is a point in this where I think they were almost kind of shouting out that. I don't really know why they did that in the film. I don't want to give everything away, but his demise is kind of like almost too easy. That was the one thing about this film that I thought was kind of a, kind of a lull in the script, really. Um, it almost seemed too easy, you know, in the end of the film, but yeah, it is what it is, man. But man, awesome film, super, super beautiful. Cinematography is fantastic in this. Like, it, it really does look amazing. And I can't give Severin enough credit for the transfer that they did on this. This is the type of movie that really needs a great transfer because it had shitty uh, DVD transfers that were cut and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure none of those did any justice. So if you want to see a beautiful ass film, check out this Blu-ray of the Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. It's all worth your time, man. It's absolutely fantastic. Like I said, the four scenes are so beautifully lit and they're so beautifully photographed. It's just, it's worth it, man. It's great. I mean, you even forget that you're waiting for Christopher Lee to show up in the film again, which is kind of a cool thing because why do you watch Christopher Lee films for his performance? Because he always steals the show and everything. Like I said, you see him in the beginning of the film, you don't see him until maybe more than half later, but it's just so worth the journey, man. Really, really great. Surprisingly dark film. It's really interesting. It's just a lot of death, a lot of shit that's going on in here. Um, Karen Dora is great in this film too. She pulls off a couple really good performances. She, yeah, I don't want to give that away, but she put, she pulls off some really good stuff in there. Like I said, there's a little bit of twists and turns with characters and things like that throughout the film, which I thought was a nice little added twist in the narrative. So, um, yeah, stylish beyond stylish. Love this movie. If I had to rate this one, I'm coming in at a nine out of 10. This is the way to watch it. If you have those old DVDs, what was it, Castle of the Walking Dead? Pfft, get rid of that shit, man. It's garbage. I think I got rid of my DVD. Um, I think I think when this box set got announced, this is the, the Eurocrypt um, Volume 1. This was uh, the last film from the, the set I hadn't actually watched yet. So, um, But uh, yeah, lots of great stuff going on in here. Don't want to give too much away from it if you haven't seen it. But um, it's just it's just a straight nightmare. It's just a straight nightmare. Beautiful, beautiful nightmare. And that's all I can say about that. So, yeah, Christopher Lee doing his thing. Beautiful ass artwork, which, which is very representative of, of the movie. Like, there's literally dead bodies everywhere and stuff like that. It's crazy. It's really cool, man. Um, oh, yeah, there's actually a couple, there's a couple effects in this film that I thought were pretty cool, too. And I think they might have used stop motion, did some stop motion on some things and then kind of reverse it and things. There's a scene where a guy gets shot and it just kind of like, just kind of buckles up and heals itself and stuff. It looks pretty cool for 1967. I mean, it's not Ray Harryhausen type, but I'm pretty sure that that was stop motion that they did. And I thought that was kind of cool. So, but uh, yeah. Highly recommend this. Awesome film. That's going to do it for day eight here on the 31 Days of Horror. Um, yeah, so that's the first film from the 60s. As you guys probably know, I like to try and do a movie from each decade. Uh, I don't really know what I have lined up after this, so we'll be getting to so probably something newer, newer-ish um, tomorrow. So stay tuned for that, and um, I'll talk to you guys later. And as usual, do